Hi Bob, um, no ice cream today, just a chocolate cross. Um, want to talk to you about your video, the United States of China. You seem to think that any kind of angry speech directed towards anyone is hate speech. And I think you need to reevaluate your definition for hate speech because there's a reason why we're all on the same page music as as far as the definition of hate speech. Now, angry speech, yeah, all of those things that you uh, described, they're angry, Some sometimes they're so wrong that anyone would be able to see that they're wrong, but hate speech is a term that we normally like to reserve for uh, certain groups of people that we are protecting. And we're protecting them because, as a group, our society has gotten together and said, you know what, these groups get hated on a lot, we're going to put them in a special category. Sometimes they're minorities, sometimes they're not, but they're still specially protected. So, when you get accused of hate speech, you've just, you know, said something mean towards one of those groups. Now, it's wrong that people are flagging each other. I hate flagging wars on YouTube, but hopefully this will all blow over and in six months your flag will go away. Uh, I wasn't able to watch your video to know whether or not there actually was hate speech in it. Um, sorry about that. Didn't I didn't catch it in time. But I do want to talk to you about a couple of things from your video. Um, but a little side note. Do you ever notice the irony of nailing Jesus, who was a carpenter, to two sticks that were nailed together like this? It's like he's a carpenter... And they're putting him to death on something that is, you know, you, you'd make it with carpentry. You know. Would have been a little bit more obvious if he were nailed to the side of a house or the broad side of a barn, you know. But that wouldn't make good trinkets for people to wear around their necks. People who have back issues. Much better to just use two sticks. Anyways, back to your video. First thing I want to talk about is the whole drowning metaphor. You see people drowning, and you are excusing yourself for whatever sort of methods you're using to save these people that you think are drowning. And... This is a state of mind that a lot of Christians have. They see people at, that do not have their culture and their religion as being lost. And they they need to be thrown a, a, a life raft, you know. They need to be thrown a flotation device to keep them from drowning. But how far are you willing to go with this analogy as far as excusing your own actions. Is it right to force your own culture and your own beliefs on other people when they themselves don't really see themselves as drowning? They don't even see themselves in that metaphor at all. They don't even see themselves in the water. Um, er. Do some angry body of Christ eating there. Um, second thing. You're kind of going off the deep end here with the whole incidence of earthquakes and people not realizing it thing. I'm going to give you some links in the description box of this video to 
the USGS, that's the US Geological Survey, they're already addressing this issue because it's very misunderstood by a lot of people because they keep on hearing about major earthquakes in the news because uh, that stuff sells. Now, you can look at the charts of the actual worldwide and just U.S. earthquakes, and there is some fluctuation. And lately, we actually have been fluctuating more towards the better, not the worse. Why we get more news coverage when we're having less earthquakes probably has something to do with that big bad one that happened in Indonesia, which really spiked the death toll for that year which you can see in the charts that will be on the USGS in the links in the description box. But they actually, at another link, uh, they actually address the issue with uh, saying that on average we've pretty much stayed the same since the 1900s as far as how many major and uh, 8.0 or more, 7.0 or more earthquakes that we have every year. Uh, Greater than 7.0 is like you can expect 17 a year, and greater than 8.0, you can just expect about one a year to happen somewhere in the world. But uh, you see more fluctuation in the lower ranges. And this can be explained by the USGS by the fact that they have more seismographs in the world now. So if you see an upward trend for the little ones that they weren't about, they weren't able to locate them or even detect them before. You know, that's that's something that uh, lends to that. Also, we have new technologies such as hydraulic fracturing, which actually create earthquakes, and those are man-made, and we can actually correlate the uh, hydraulic fracturing process to nearby seismographs and, and see that when they're letting up the pressure that they've pumped up the earth with, they cause earthquakes. Um, in Trinidad, Colorado, they've been cause, causing 4.0 earthquakes. You know? So, the sky isn't falling. Um, Jesus is not coming any sooner than uh, you thought he was before you thought that the earthquakes were a sign. Um, and I don't even know that earthquakes are supposed to be a sign at all. Um, I don't know where you're getting that. But check the data. And check it from a reputable source. Don't just put in into your Google later something like Judgment Day is coming, earthquakes prove it, and then read the first five things. Find a reputable source. I'm giving you the USGS as a link in the description box because they're reputable. Um, yeah. Uh, despite wh whether or not you are afraid of tomorrow, tomorrow is going to come. Uh... Stay strong. Try not to worry yourself into a corner. Eat some chocolate. I'll see you later.